the two. We're going to use really simple tools. We've got ratchet extension, wobbly extension, 10 millimeter socket. We've got a nice big flat head. We've got a smaller flat head. Phillips. We're find our smaller flat head here. Also got carburetor cleaner. And if we need it, starting fluid. So, all this right here is all we're going to need to take apart this carburetor. It's a 20 horsepower Yamaha outboard. And it's not running very well, so we pulled on the cord. It did not uh, fire up. It ran for maybe a second or so. Tried pumping the bulb, all the normal stuff. Took a life jacket or a rag, dumped some fuel on that, and put that by the intake here, and it did run. And so we knew it was a fuel delivery problem. Since we know it's a fuel delivery problem, we start working our way back, make sure the carburetor has fuel in it, and we undid this little screw here. It did. So that tells me that fuel is going all the way from the tank to the carburetor, but not through the jets into the intake. So we need to take it apart and clean the jets. Start with 10 millimeter here. Break these two little nuts free. You can disconnect our throttle linkage right here just by popping up this little plastic nub. Pop that out. There's no choke linkage, it's electronic. Take our crankcase breather hose off, just slides out. That is for positive crankcase ventilation or all your blow-by gets by your pistons into your crankcase, gets fed back into the intake so it gets burnt up in the engine, and you have lower emissions. Got one loose there. here. This is where the wobble extension comes into play. It's kind of tight on these motors and you want to be able to get your socket lined up just right. Also got another little 10 millimeter bolt here holding our intake manifold on. Try to do this over dry ground so you don't lose your parts in the water. So we'll be kind of careful here since we have this, all these electrical wires running here to our choke solenoid. Pull our fuel line off. And if you need to, you can use a little flat head screwdriver to pry on it to just break the rubber free and overcome that initial friction. So there's definitely fuel getting to our carburetor, as you can see. Taking the carburetor apart, we've got four screws here. We can pull out of the bowl of the carburetor off here. Bowls where all the fuel would normally sit in. And we'll find that in a minute. So, we've got our float. The float actuates the needle valve, which lets fuel under the carburetor. All that's working right. We're going to go ahead and pull our jets out here. Make sure they're not too dirty. So, we can find where I dropped that little rubber stopper at. Not it down here, is it? No, the rubber stopper down inside the cowling there. So, that hole's pretty clean. Use our smaller screwdriver here. So, we have our low speed jet with this little screwdriver and our high speed jet over there. The low speed jet's plugged, it won't idle, but maybe it runs at high throttle. If it doesn't run at all, probably both of them are plugged. And if it idles fine, but doesn't run well at higher PM, like it's being starved of fuel, it's your high-speed jet plugged. We'll take our two jets out. The low speed came out by being unscrewed. The high speed came out, just falls out once you get that other screw out of there. We'll take our carburetor cleaner. Let's 
spray through there. Make sure it's coming out of all those little tiny holes there. All those little tiny holes where it get plugged with salt and dirt and debris. Idle speed jet. He's kind of plugged up. Don't spray him out. better. And then we'll spray through those passages too in case we have any dirt debris inside there. Watch your eyes there. The carb cleaner evaporates pretty quickly so it feels cold on your skin. If you get too much in there it's not a problem because it will evaporate. We're just checking the normal operation there, this float. Looks like it might be hung up a little bit. We want to see when we hold it like this that the float hangs down naturally. And then of course as the bowl fills up with fuel, you'd want it to float up and close off the fuel valve so no more extra fuel gets in. It seems like it's working fine now, but maybe it has to be replaced in the near future. If we really want to test it, make sure it's working right. We can find ourselves a little straw. Find the port on the carburetor that the fuel normally flows through, which is this guy here. Put the straw in. And we should have this carb cleaner flow through the needle valve when the carburetor is held with gravity pulling the float down. And we do. And when I push up on the float, it closes. Open on the float flows through that needle valve. So that is working right. We go ahead and put our jets back in there. And I like to make things snug but not super tight. The next time you do this, you don't wanna strip anything. Also using the right size screwdriver is really crucial. Take your time with it. If you do strip out some of these screws, you'll be buying new ones and you won't be going out for practice right that day. You'll have to wait on parts from the dealer. Good news is those jets don't go in upside down, so that's the right way that one goes. If I were to put it in upside down, I would know because, well, it doesn't really want to go in. Now all these are a little different. This is a 20 horsepower model. So we've got a little rubber stopper that goes on our low speed side. Typically on your eight and your nine horsepower models, you won't have that little rubber stopper. But uh, basically it's the same carburetor on those all those different models, just they modify differently with restricted fuel flow. So they have a lot of fuel, all the fuel flows through that little tiny pinhole. Some of it leaks through that little pinhole in there. But uh, if you don't have the rubber stopper, this will not run because it'll be getting way too much fuel. So we need to find that wherever I dropped it. Yeah, it's like heavy yeah, so. Back. so we've located our river stopper. And we're going to put that on our low speed side. That's where it came from. When in doubt, if your motor's a little different than ours, just take a video when you take it apart so you can at least put it back together the way it came apart. This right here is the intake for our choke. So we're going to clean that. Not that we ever use the chokes, we don't have a side console on the motor, but might as well clean all these little tiny pinholes and pieces and not lose our guy there. Just clean as much as you can while you got it apart. Make the job worthwhile. So, pull all that's together, we'll get our bowl. We'll put that guy back on, check that our gasket looks good. We don't need to replace it, it's seated in there. No tears or anything like that. And there's only one way to put it on. So kind of difficult to, uh, to mess it up, but if you are confused, look at where the fuel comes in, then figure out where the fuel comes in on your motor. And you can line those two things up there.
All right, so we got our carburetor bowl back on. Next thing we want to take a look at is the top of the carburetor. We have this little plate here, and fuel does pass through here. Got a little membrane or gasket. You can see the little tip of there. So while we're in the cleaning mode, take this apart here. Take our plate off, clean it off a little bit. We'll spray it with some carbon cleaner. Yep. Really careful with our Should gasket be. here. Clean him off. And all these little passages where fuel flows through, we want to clean out. Watch your eyes there, Mason. And if you're ever in doubt which side goes up or down, whichever side's got all the grooves on it is the one that faces down because that obviously got pressed in over the years. Yeah. So all those little grooves. Pick up our plate there. Make sure there's no dirt or debris. That's why that's what it changed it. That's all that. Yeah, like, who's the dirt of me? Someone's like, yeah, I'm not. I was like, oh. And definitely make sure this gas gets lined up in place as you get your plate on here. A little tougher with this choke solenoid. Most motors that you're working on will not have these. We can loosen them up a little bit. Give ourselves some room. Uh, I can pull it. Yeah, I'll pull it. There we go. Gas gets in place. Get our screws lined up here. Now this is an aluminum carburetor and you're using steel screws on it. Also aluminum intake manifold, steel screws. Really make sure your threads are lined up before you start forcing anything so you don't strip out threaded holes there. Otherwise you're going to be buying new parts or trying to figure out how to use a tap and die set to clean up your threads. So, we're ready to start putting this back together. Just those two bolts, we'll line them up. Really important thing is our gasket. Make sure we have our whole gasket here because it looks like we're missing a spacer. Here it is. So we have a spacer and two gaskets. The gaskets get lined up inside that spacer that way with a little pull tab off to the side. Same thing, pull tab off to the side. And then this gets tilted over the side to hold that in place. Really important to have your gaskets and your spacer because the carburetor depends on having airflow through it to suck up the fuel. If you don't have your gaskets in place and you have an air leak here after the carburetor, air's just going to come in, not get pulled through the carburetor, and you're not going to get the right amount of fuel you need. It's what's called a vacuum leak since engines produce vacuum or, or pull a vacuum and that's how they pull air into themselves. You can test for a vacuum leak if you suspect you have one by taking a little bit of starting fluid and just spraying around where you think your leak is. And if you hear the engine rev up, then you know you do have a leak because it's pulling fuel in or, or starting fluid, ether, and it's running off of that. Grab our extension here. I like using a short socket rather than a deep socket so you can actually push your bolt into place rather than let, just letting it slide out on you. Like everything finger tight. Start it off with your fingers so you don't strip out those uh, aluminum threaded holes. How many lines are there down there? Four. Okay, no wait. Once it's snug down on both sides there, you can grab your ratchet and finish it off. Thank you. 
apparently I'm not going to touch the water. Yeah, that's all right. Hey, that's snug. We're not looking for super tight or as tight as you can make anything. These are plastic parts you're squeezing down on, so just snug. Snug enough that you're not going to have an air leak of any sort. They're not going to come out, but not so tight that you're going to crush the gaskets or the plastic or crack anything. This motor, you can tell, has never been into the dealer for service. This little plug here, this brass plug you see, behind that is a mixture screw. Now, with the EPA regulations and everything, they don't want you messing with the mixture on here. Mixture is how much air and fuel you get. If you have more fuel and less air, that's a rich mixture. Less fuel, more air, clean mixture. And we set that right by here. That determines how much fuel goes in per the ratio of air. So if we did need to adjust that, we would just take a little brass punch, punch that out, and then it's a simple flathead screw that you adjust. Screwing it in will close the orifice, make it a leaner mixture. Unscrewing it will make a richer mixture. You want your motor to run as lean as possible without being too lean. Don't want to burn more fuel than you need to, and too much fuel will foul up your spark plugs and give you carbon deposits inside your cylinders. We'll connect all our hoses again. We'll put our throttle cable back to there. Again, no, typically you'll find a choke connector, same as this little uh, steel rod here, a similar connector. There's this little plastic thing that you push up on and that unclips it. You can pull it up the side. That'll be for a motor where you find a choke connection somewhere in front there. So our carburetor's back together, fuel lines are connected, everything, and carburetor's rebuilt, cleaned, we're ready to try it.